Thank you very much for joining us here on News Today 12 FS Story. And barely 24 hours after the suspension of its General Secretary and Second Vice Chairman, John News can report that disciplinary processes seeking the suspension of yet another party member and one time flag bearer hopeful Dr. Arthur Kennedy uh, has, has, been, uh, has started. Confirming the news earlier on News Desk, Deputy General Secretary of the Party, Nano Brebois, said the party will be meeting over the issue in the coming days. It authoritatively that a petition has been forwarded to the National Disciplinary Committee of the New Patriotic Party. That petition was signed by 22 members. They've indicated their names, the voter ID card numbers, their full numbers, and what are the 22. They have forwarded their petition to the National Discipline Committee. I am not a member of the National Discipline Committee, mm. but at least, at least I'll be able to tell you on authority unreservedly that there's a petition which has been forwarded to the National Discipline Committee against the conduct, the utterances, the publications of Dr. Obena Atta Kenneth. It will not be fair for me to preempt the outcome of it. A petition by a group of members or individuals in the NPP that petitioned the National Discipline Committee. Okay. The matter is before the National Discipline Committee. It will be prejudicial, it will be scandalous for me to run commentary on that. Okay. I think that I can just tell you authoritatively, authoritatively that there is a petition. Sure, Anything sure. Anything is short of that, but we cannot go into details. Into details. Of the I, 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 I don't understand Even that. Even I won't go to the extent of mentioning the names of, of the, the persons who, who, okay, exactly. Let no alone problem. considering the substantive issues they have raised in their petition. Now, reacting to the news, however, Dr. Arthur Kennedy expressed disappointment in the recent happenings in the party, describing the move to suspend him and several others who have expressed dissenting views as one that will surely ensure the NPP's defeat in next year's general elections. Now, he further expressed worry over the manner in which the party's flag bearer, Nanado, has handled issues in the party, describing him, that's Nanado, as the NPP's biggest problem. It is strange because in the last few weeks, some people have even questioned my membership in the U.S. branch. Um, followed by Abra Asibu Kwamangese, followed by Harun Esiku, and now this. And I argue that um, it is strange that the MPP membership card does not have the aspiration. And when we join the MPP, we pledge our loyalty. We do not pledge that we have abandoned our judgment. And I have no hesitation in asserting that the processes that have been followed here have been improper, they have been unconstitutional, they have dishonored Ghana, and I am charging our leadership that they are indulging in a very selfish exercise when the people of Ghana want us to unite and save our nation. I agree 110 percent, and I also think that they make the mistake of thinking that um, the flag is infallible. With all respect, I don't even think the Pope is infallible. We know of clear examples when the flag bearer ed, for example, all die be die. He kept repeating it for four years. And there are a lot of other things, apart from even um, breaches of procedure. I think the disciplinary committee and the party structures have been hijacked by a cabal. Meanwhile, Communications Director of the New Patriotic Party, Nana Komia, says the decision to suspend some executives of the party for various offences will not have any bearing on the chances of the NPP in next year's general elections. Now, he added that it is untrue. Claims the party raised an army of petitioners against those perceived as suspended Chairman Paula Foucault's allies, explaining the National Executive Committee cannot be manipulated. I, uh, I was an ardent supporter of Afoko, so... This pro, this or pro, that doesn't work. At the end of the day, it was stated misbehavior. And um, in the case of Kabana, he went and defended himself. Obviously, the district right committee was not satisfied with his responses. In the case of Krab, he didn't even attend upon the disciplinary committee. There have been specific charges that the neck meeting on a focal, he went out. I'm sure he came to your station too. Now, the duties of the NPP member, you don't, you have to publicly uphold the decisions of the party. Clearly, by coming to your station and other stations and, and, and rallying against that decision, he was inciting disobedience to the decision. And it was on that basis that the, the petition came. The petition did not come on the basis of a pro this or pro that.
Mm. But, but tell me, we understand that a point, Mrs. Uh, Kwame Nai Japon uh, himself, and you, you made a point that he, 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 sh he showed good faith. You, it doesn't mean that Mr. Uh, Sami Krabs refused to appear before the disciplinary committee, which you say it was disrespectful, mainly accounted for his faith. Well, the report, the report of the disciplinary committee, they took strong exception to that. You know, if perhaps he had gone there and um, shown respect by attending to them, it, it may have influenced their, their decision. I don't know. I'm not a member of the disciplinary committee. But really, if charges have been brought against you, whether in a court of law or uh, in an organization like that, you don't go and defend yourself then the people have no option but to uh, uphold what the complainant is looking for. If there's a case against you in court, you don't go and defend yourself. The court will give judgment <laughs> against you. And the, the plaintiff may get all that they want. Mm. Does the removal of these three officers, not the removal, in fact, the suspension of these three officers now give the MPP a brighter chance in 2016, you think? Well, obviously, that's what the party believes. The party believes that at this point, it is better off with this action. I mean, you, you can imagine that the party taking this action will consider every option and, 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 and do what is in the best interest. Including, of including the enhancing your chances in 2016? Obviously, the party believes so. If the party didn't believe so, I don't think it would take these actions. I've heard some say that, and in fact, Mr. Samika predicted it, that after his comments about the, the next decision on Paul Afoko, the party raised uh, an army, as he put it, of some guns to petition against him. Kamenei Japan had accounts petitioning against him, and that seems to be the trend. That's the strategy that the party Well, in the first place, what you are saying is that the people who petitioned don't have a mind of their own and that will be an insult to the petitioners. Um, you saw the petition against Mr. Foko. The people who did the petition, I mean, they are standing in the party. I am not a founding member. Those people are founding members, you know. So these are not people who can be manipulated by anybody. The members of the disciplinary committee, most Reverend Asante entry, you think it's somebody who can be manipulated or teleguided by somebody? Adokufo, Amabuzia, Aikweotu. <laughs> These are not people who can be manipulated by anybody. Um, the NEC, the National Executive Committee itself, about uh, 50 people. You think they can be manipulated by anybody? So um, that, that hasn't got... Um, in the, in the grounding at all. At the end of the day, spe specific charges were brought. Um, to take up Naji Pond, there are specific charges against him. He actually showed respect and attended upon the disciplinary committee, and the, and the NEC acknowledged that and commended him. But the meeting also decided that the weight of the issues against So to help us understand how much of a problem these uh, series of events are uh, likely to pose to the chances of the NPP in next year's elections, is political science lecturer Dr. Ali Dusseiru, who joins us live now over the telephone. Doc, good afternoon. Many thanks for your time. Now, tell us how exactly the NPP is expected to recover from this internal bickering, uh, even ahead of the uh, election 2016. I, I think if you ask me when this is going to stop, I'll not be able to tell. Because I just think this is, this is the beginning of, of more things to come. And you have seen the, the mechanisms and the procedure being used by the suspended uh, national chairman, Paul Afoko. He, still, he, he has headed to court and he's going to battle things out. We don't know what Kobna Japan is going to do. We don't know what Samir Krab is going to do. And we don't know the action that the people they intend to suspend are going to take. But the idea is that as long as these things keep happening and they want to fight back, it's going to drag the party for a very long time. I'm not saying that they shouldn't, the disciplinary committee of the party shouldn't discipline people 
who have done things outside the legitimate uh, constitutional means of doing things within the party. But I, like I always mention, I believe there is always a way of, of getting to the bottom of issues like this and bringing people on board than, than resorting to suspension. Suspension is, is even good when it is seen to be done in an impartial, objective manner. But if people have reasons to suspect that these disciplinary procedures is selectively being implemented, that creates more problems for the, the, the people who support this, those who have, quote and unquote, victimized mm. in this particular way. Right. Dr. So I... I, I, I'd like to hold briefly uh, as we try and listen to Dr. Arthur Kennedy, uh, who spoke to us earlier on news desk, and he actually described the MPP's flag bearer, Nana Adudanko Kufado, as the party's biggest problem. I am very disappointed in how he has conducted himself as leader, but 12 months is a long time. He may recover, and before we know it, um, just like Buhari became a new man, he might be a new man and he can lead us to victory. But as things stand now, respectfully and painfully, I can accept that we are heading for defeat. I know that Siku fans like Ubribwa and other all die be die aficionados who watch it for to defeat and then when he loses they will help him find scapegoats. We don't need scapegoats. They should look in the mirror. Pogo said we have seen the enemy and he is us. Is Daniel Kufado MPP's biggest problem as of now? Yes, undoubtedly. I think that instead of looking for all the excuses for our defeats in 2008, 2008, we should look at the presidential candidate. Um, we, we've changed chairman and general secretary a number of times. We've blamed the electoral commission. We've blamed um, the security forces. We've blamed Kofo. We've blamed Asante. You know, we've blamed the Supreme Court. Maybe the solution is sitting right in front of us in the name. So, Dr. Ali Dutedu, if you did hear him right, uh, he was saying that uh, maybe the party seems to be blaming quite a number of people for their misfortunes, when really the problem uh, could be Nanado Danko Ekofuado. Uh, is this a fair assessment for more Yeah, people, it's, it's a likely option because if you look at what's going on, whatever goes right in the party, they will praise Nana Kofado because currently he's the leader of the party, he's the flag bearer of the party, in a way. If things are also going bad, equally the blame will be laid on his doorstep. And people have believed that all these things which has happened in the NGT for all, sorry, the MPP for all these years, if he had able to demonstrate strong leadership and commitment, most of these things will have stopped. People believe that in the processes of resolving these disputes, he has tended to, to support one particular faction. The people who are loyal to him and, and, and not the people who are against him. And in most cases, you have to be very diligent. It's a very difficult balancing act. It's even important for you to pull your enemies closer to you or those you think are not on your side closer to you than those who are already in your pocket or those who are already in support of you. But when you openly or you are very silent to some issues that, that implies that you support them, the people are going to read the minutes this way. And I agree with us. They have, the MPP has blamed a lot of people since 2008. But I think this is the time for them to do an internal retrospection. It is very crucial. The, the huge monster chasing them might be within, rather than outside. Mm -hmm. And the, the sooner they start it now, the better. Because we just have like barely a year to election. Do we then say Nana Kufuado has uh, failed in his capacity as a leader of the party? I, I wouldn't say that directly, but I, like I mentioned, it, it is a model of leadership. When you are doing well, people praise, your, praise you as a leader. When your party is not doing well, they blame you. It's just like this country, when everything is, whatever is happening, we blame the president, John Dramani Mahama. If it's good, we praise him. If it's bad, we blame him. So it's just the same thing as, as, uh, as a political party. If you are the person that needs to, to be elected as a president, your leadership qualities must be brought to bear. Mm. If you are able to do that very well, people will praise you. If you are not able to do that very well, they will blame you. So he can't escape blame when, things, or when all these things are going on in the party. Right. Dr. Arthur Kennedy also, uh, also says, should the party proceed on this particular tangent, they are 
almost likely destined to lose next year's general election. Do, do you really agree with this? No, I, I don't think we, we need Kennedy and Japan to say it. It is obvious that if, if they keep on doing what they are doing, they, they are going to lose. It's obvious. Look, what they are doing is that, look, ND, MPP is the Democratic Party. They should allow people the, the right to express legitimate dissent. People should be able to ventilate their grievances openly, without fear. Once they begin to gag people, suspend people for speaking their minds, they are going to build an, a, a huge majority, cultivate the silence within the party. Culture of silence will develop within the party. A lot of people will keep quiet, but you have a way of expressing their dissent. If you don't openly express it now, it's going to be explosive later. So I think they should be open up to criticism. Mm. It's good for the development of their party, rather than what they are doing now. Many thanks for your time on news today, Dr. Ali Dusedo. And Dr. Ali Dusedo is a political science lecturer with the University of Ghana. Now, our public, rea public reactions to the suspension of the opposition New Patriotic Party's general secretary have been mixed in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi. Now, some people appear satisfied at the decision of the party, but for others, the approach has negative implications for Ghana's democratic development. Now, besides, that's obviously besides betraying the trust of the people. Ashanti regional correspondent Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin spoke to some former members of parliament and regional executives of the party is that we have a party to protect and we have a party that we all came together to serve. If the party has taken a decision, I think it is important on the host on all members of the party to abide by that decision and then let's move on. We don't need to talk about issues like if that someone doesn't do this, this will happen. No, I think we have to work harder. The issue is 2016. Even though people might not like it, people might also like it, you understand? So it is only proper for Ghanaians or for all the party members to understand that it is the decision of the NEC and the Article 3D of our own constitution talk to, uh, talks about that. It says that you will have to defend, protect the party and you have to abide by the rules and then regulations of the party. So I think it is what the NEC has said that you have to go by it use our constitution to work that's all if we use our constitution and neck takes a you know it takes a decision we all support but when we don't want to uh, we don't want some people to breach the constitution when we don't understand what we are do they are doing when we believe that somebody is breaching the constitution we always look up to the constitution not individuals and that is my problem we must sit up removing these people will not automatically give us the power no very good question look when they called Kwabena to come and face the disciplinary committee, he was in Amenfi West. You can call him, working for the party, because there will be a by-election on, on Tuesday. Somebody didn't even have the patience to let the person finish with whatever he was doing there to help the party. Just come, come for us to dismiss you. Come for us to suspend you. That's what I'm saying. We, we could have given those people some assignments. Kofu could work with Mr. McMenu, though he was not on his side. He wasn't against him. He was not on Kofu's side. But then he worked to help President Kofu to win power for us. It's only, you know, uh, in peace, not in pieces, that we can get the power. We need to let peace prevail. We need to go as a, as a family. You're watching news today here on Joy News Multi TV. We are taking a break. We'll be back shortly with some more. Don't go away. Thank you very much for staying with us here on news today. Now, leadership of the Coalition of Concerned Teachers says it will advise teachers not to stay in class and supervise extracurricular activities if government does not rescind this decision to scrap motivation. Alliance. Uh, Ernesto Poku addressed the media a while ago. We woke up just last week to hear that government has scrapped um, staff motivation allowance. We were surprised because it was not government that instituted staff motivation allowance. And so why should government scrap the staff motivation allowance? I mean, our colleagues, our counterparts in the health sector take allowances for it. Teachers don't take anything. Apart from extra duty, we have what is called co-curricular activities. 
Teachers will have to follow students to clubs, I mean, to programs, sometimes on Saturdays. There are a lot of work that teacher, teachers do apart from their normal teaching and learning. So parents and Ghana Education Service, the employer, then decided that there's a need to motivate the teacher. And so every student will have to pay 10 CDs at the end of every term to motivate the teacher to continue doing teaching and learning. We are very much surprised that government just woke up one day without proper consultation with its stakeholders. We call it social partners. I'm talking about the employer, which is Ghana Education Service, and the teacher unions who, who represent the employees of Ghana Education Service. And government then decided that I am taking it off. Meanwhile, you are not replacing it with any allowance. Indirectly, you are saying that teachers shouldn't be motivated and that they should stop all extra work that they are doing apart from their teaching and learning. So we are saying that teachers should not supervise the students when they are on prep. We are saying that apart from the normal teaching, when students are traveling outside the campus, we shouldn't follow them. We are saying that we shouldn't do supervision in the morning when they are sweeping the classrooms. And so we are of the opinion that that decision was uncalled for and that we are asking government to rescind its decision. Other than that, I mean, the consequences is quite serious. We can now go live to the Accra International Conference Center and bring you uh, an update on the situation there. And as you do know, it's the National Honours Day and uh, we are honoring some very personalities of this country. And uh, currently being honored now is Speaker of Parliament, Edward Dorja, who is actually uh, delivering a speech after receiving his honor. To His Excellency, the President of the Republic, for graciously recognizing the respective contributions that we have in our small ways made to our nation building and honoring us this day in splendor. It is my conviction that the awards we've received today will assure majority of Ghanaians and the younger generation in particular that there is dignity in service. It is said that what we do for ourselves, there we face. What we do for others and the world remains and it is immortal. Little did we know that our modest contributions in our various fields will be remembered one day. We are indeed humbled today, Mr. President. It is in that spirit that we thank you, Your Excellency and the people of Ghana for recognizing our meager contributions to the development of this dear country of ours. Your Excellency, it is indeed a truism that our predecessors sacrificed that succeeding generations of this country will live in dignity and prosperity. It is therefore important for all of us to uphold that virtue in our respective spheres of endeavors to advance the cause of Ghana. We thank all those who have supported us these years behind the scenes. Without them, we would not have been able to make any contribution worth recognizing. And so to them, we dedicate these awards. Mr. President, on behalf of the awardees, I pledge our commitment to the cause of nation building and devotion to duty, whatever that duty is and wherever that duty may take us, so long as it is in the course of the service of this country.
And now, Speaker of Parliament Edward Duarte who addressing the gathering there after he was awarded by the states there. We'll bring you much more on that subsequently, particularly on the post, which airs at 3 p.m. But away from that, let's do some more stories. And the International Labour Organization has revealed that the agricultural sector has a huge potential to create jobs but needs to rebrand to attract more young people. Now, to do this, government should provide relevant education and training. In that line, the Youth Enterprise Support, that's YES, has trained 16 youth in farming under the Leventis Foundation Farmers Training at the University of Ghana Livestock and Poultry Research Center. The trainees went through a three-month intensive training in poultry and pig farming. The chief executive officer of the Youth Employment Support Initiative, Helga Bwedi, told Joy News growth in the agricultural sector would serve as a catalyst for growth of related enterprises such as agro-processing, agro-tourism, agricultural mechanization, engineering and agricultural export. She added this move will facilitate job creation along the entire value chain to the benefits of households, families and businesses in the country at large. At YES, we don't just offer financial support, we offer technical support as well. We had 107 beneficiaries who were awarded in August. I'm sure you are in the media you know. Out of those 107, we have about 26 of them who qualified for training and technical support. And that's what they were doing here. And that's what they've actually graduated from. They came here to learn about poultry production, piggery production and other livestock production. Today they've graduated graduated and we're going to um, again assess them they've learned theories they've learned some practicals but then do they know the business side of it because yes it's not a free you know free handout of money to anybody the money we give you at yes has to work it has got to sweat so that it can come back and then we can help more youth I'm confident about what they've learned here but like I'm saying practical daily training on a, in a commercial environment is different from when you're in a research center. So again, we'll test them in that commercial environment. You see, yes, it's not just about bring a paper, we give you money, we forget about you. We want to work with you every step of the way. If we feel that you're not quite ready, we give you the relevant skills training so that you can go along. I want to see these young ones in the next two years wealthy poultry farmers and I mean wealthy and it can be done but it starts somewhere and we've started it and we'll continue and work closely with them and make sure that they succeed and be rich and then they can support us yes again. One of the graduates who went through poultry farming training successfully told Joy News the training has been beneficial to him. We can now do some business after these messages. To some business now, and the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana is warning annual production of cocoa may fall way below 500,000 metric tons if government does not institute appropriate measures to mitigate the falling volumes of the crop. Economist and vice presidential candidate for the new patriotic party, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, issued a similar warning last week. Now, these, however, contradict projections by the International Cocoa Organization, ICCO, that cocoa production may recover between 850,000 tons to 900,000 tons in the upcoming crop season. Programs coordinator for the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, Charles Nyaba, tells Joy Business the situation on the ground does not support such projections. Climate change is setting in, rainfall pattern is changing, the weather pattern is changing, and all this affects productivity outcome that we get. So if you predict all this, then you need to be able to make a committed investment that will mitigate this kind of risks. But if you see all this is coming and then you continue to sit there, I will not be surprised if it even declines less than what Baumia predicted. So what I think we need to do is to actually quickly find mitigation measures to be able to address them. Most of our farmers are aging and youth are not interested in going into farming. So if you don't put in measures that will attract the youth to go in, in the next five, ten years time, these aged farmers would have been phased out. Now, live poultry sellers fear they may not be able to meet local demand for poultry products this festive season because of the current challenges with power supply. According to them, the power situation is unduly affecting the ability to dress and package the beds for sale. 
The threat posed by the outbreak of bird flu does not appear to be the only challenge live bird sellers have to deal with this festive season. The unending power crisis appears to be affecting the operations and could impact negatively in the lead-up to Christmas. Vincent Apanga is organizer of the United Live Bird Sellers Association. It's, it's, it's affecting us one way or the other because, you know, we, some of us are using machines and other things to dress the bears for sale. And when there is a light off, we have to use our hands, which sometimes delays or even causes us a lot of us to, to use our hands to do that kind of job. So sometimes if the light is on, we can actually use our machines and other things to dress the bears and sell. That is what is a, is a serious challenge to us and we are trying and we are praying everything will come back to normal. The United Life Best Sellers Association, which was launched today, is among others expected to promote consumption of locally produced poultry. Dr. Hannah Bisu is Deputy Agric Minister in charge of livestock. This is the most important part of the value chain when it comes to poultry, and not the poultry breads, because when we produce it, they don't sell them then we will not be able to continue production. And so they, they do perform the very, I would say is the oxygen at the end of the day, because they sell our breasts out. So we need to collaborate and cooperate with them to make sure that the value chain ends well. The association comprises live bed sellers from major markets in the greater Accra region. Now, some of the country's domestic airlines are set to resume scheduled flights from today, following clearance by the Ghana Meteorological Agency. Most of the airlines have had to ground their aircrafts since last Friday because of Hamatan winds that limited visibility beyond acceptable levels. Visibility standard in the aviation industry is 5 kilometers, and hence anything below that means it is not prudent to fly. Since last, last week, dusty Hamatan winds kept visibility levels below three kilometers, some analysts say. Some domestic carriers have had to refund ticket purchases to passengers due to flight cancellations. Chief Operating Officer at Africa World Airlines Captain Samuel Thompson confirms visibility has improved significantly. City over North Africa. Now, Power Minister Dr. Kwabna Donko has indicated that beginning next week, Ghanaians will see a significant improvement in the current load shading exercise. Speaking to Accra Base TV3, Dr. Kwabna Donko said government had made the necessary interventions to ensure additional power generation from next week, a situation he believes will help ease the load shedding exercise. Now, he said, quote, it may not exist as at Christmas or as at the end of the month. But the caveat is that, for example, if the SPO trips will have a challenge for the short period that we will have to bring it back, end quote. Now, he added that government <clears throat> is working from all fronts to ensure the problem is completely dealt with, he said. He said, quote, essentially, we are working from all fronts. I expect that the quantum being shared should be reducing from next week, by which time we will have had the 120 units in place from a trouble, and by which time also the 150 TAPCO that is down would have been up. And news just coming in suggests that uh, indeed uh, these domestic flight operators have resumed uh, operations with Stabo said to uh, have already flown out a couple of times this morning uh, alone. And that will be all for business anyway. We'll bring you much more business news subsequently uh, in the day. But time now for sports with Benedict Osu. Okay, so we pray that Didier Ayu will win it for a second time. He won it in 2011, and we are hoping that he will win it this afternoon when the announcement is made on the BBC. That will be in about 3.30 there on the BBC. Well, let's do some more here. An emergency committee member of the Ghana Football Association, Kukuya, has exclusively revealed to Joy Sports a meeting involving the association's top hierarchy and premier Division 1 clubs will be held next Monday to address the current situation of uncertainty over the start date of the next season's Premier League. Now, Kukweya explains the top hierarchy of the EFA are equally worried as the clubs and wants to meet them for a quick solution to the current situation. 
the FA is definitely going to meet all the clubs, then put the cards on the table that these are the issues. What, how best do we solve it? Then everybody brings his or uh, idea for it, and then we take, we put our best foot for it. So it's a worry to the FA, the executive committee, the emergency committee, as well as the president. So is that all the clubs have been invited for a stakeholders meeting. We've not talked about promotion and promotion because of the constant litigation going on. So what we intend to do is that on Monday we all judge and put our house together and decide on the best way forward. It is something that all the clubs must be agreeable to to. Because when you're talking about stakeholders meeting, those are the things that is needed. You can't take a decision alone where you know that the decision involves a lot of the class. Well, this afternoon on our 2015 review of the various sporting disciplines, we look at boxing. Now, Ghana won a bronze medal at the African Games, and that was the very first medal won by Team Ghana at the Games. For more on this and other things that happened in boxing this year, here's a report to, uh, put together by Joy Sports editor Nathan Elato. The wait for a major world title continued in 2015 with a mixed bag of stories. In terms of progress, it was rather the potential Richard Comey, who under the guidance of his trainer Carl Loco, made massive climbs with four knockouts back to back. Two of those won him the Commonwealth and IBF Intercontinental titles. And note, these fights have taken him through big boxing destinations including the USA, Germany, South Africa and Denmark. And the icing on the cake for him was the big recognition by the Sports Writers Association of Ghana as professional boxer of the year at their last awards night. After what has been a good year, Kome, who is undefeated in 23 fights, is ranked fourth by the IBF and ninth by the WBC. Indications are that the big moment may come in 2016. The story was, however, a sad one for his compatriot, Frederick Lawson, who suffered his first career defeat after a broken jaw in his bout against Kevin Bizier in an IBF title eliminator, bringing his record to 24 wins and one defeat. The year is expected to round up with a local blockbuster, the rematch between Aite Powers and Bukum Banku, named Repeat or Revenge. With total prize money in the region of 50,000 Ghana cities and a Range Rover SUV for the winner, one would think that both boxers will look ahead to this with a lot of seriousness. But just like the maiden bout last year on May 16, there are challenges. Bukum Banku is asking for a new date in February next year. The Ghana Boxing Authority is yet to decide on this. Well, that's it for me. Stay tuned uh, at 2. There is more sports with Nathaniel Lato or George Aldo Jr. will be your way on sports today for more. Enjoy the rest of the program. Have a great weekend.